Hi friends, it's Susan from Wild Cottage. You're very welcome here. Returning viewers, you may see a new setup. New viewers, thank you for trying out this podcast. You're very welcome. I will let you all know that I'm not actually at Wild Cottage at the minute. So if you have been following the podcast, particularly if you've been following on Instagram, where I am Wild Cottage Knitting, you may realize that things have gone topsy-turvy in life at the minute, and I've had to make sort of an emergency trip to the U.S. So I'm in the U.S. right now, and I probably won't be back to Ireland for several months. And I'll talk about that in the life section. But you're very welcome to, I need to think of a name for this place, but this is my little area in uh, the apartment where I have set it all up over the past couple of days for my crafting. So you're very welcome to this space. And um, so I will say one or two things real quickly. Tom is, that's my partner. He's back in Ireland. He's at Wild Cottage. He has taken care of our two, two dogs. In, uh, in Ireland, we have a little cottage in the hills in the west of Ireland of, of County Clare. That's where we live. And we have a small holding for nature and we have so much wildlife. We have a beautiful natural dyes garden that was recently awarded a grant from the Hen Harrier Project for which we are so thankful and enabled us to really make that garden. Um, and definitely you will be seeing it again it might not really be till spring, um, but that's when it's going to be doing exciting things anyways. And Tom, I'll get Tom to make a few little videos to send and I can add them on to a future edition of the podcast. Anyhow, so that was just a little bit of admin out of the way. So, okay. And also, oh, one more thing is I will put timestamps on this video. So if there are things you aren't interested in or things you want to hurry up and get to, you can skip. And I do my best to put all the links and the information about the things I talk about in the drop down box. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick little tour of this room where I am basing my craft work. So I probably have said at the beginning of this little episode that I'm obviously, I'm not at Wild Cottage in Ireland. I'm back in a little apartment in Virginia in the US and I'm here I came oh anyways I won't go into that but this is my little uh, area that I've repurposed for crafting while I'm here and I have gone to the two shops that are in Williamsburg Virginia on the James River, River yarn crawl and I've gotten some lovely things there and here as well there's some things and I will probably show you some of those things in the main podcast. I'm working on my pumpkin, my great pumpkin shawl still. It's a giant Stephen West creation, so it's taken me a while. In here, I've got, I brought my um, fiber that I dyed, naturally dyed with uh, oak leaves back in Wild Cottage and a ball of yarn that I'm gonna make a special Christmas shawl with. But this, let me show you this lovely stool. So if you watched the podcast before, you might have remembered when I talk about my dear friend, Joanne, who died about two months ago, and she was a great crafter. And she made this lovely stool, hand painted it and stuck all the shells from, you know, from the local area. There's, there's a lot of big rivers, James River, York River, and of course there's the sea that she collected. And she made that. And there's also a little stand that goes with it, but I don't have it here. I have that in the bathroom. This is a lovely um, little uh, kind of basket. This was my mother's, and I have got all my little embroidery set yeah. things. That, and I'm working on one at the minute, and I'll show you. But I have them in there, so that's special. This furniture is um, handed down to me from my grandmother on my mom's side, as is this. It's lovely maple wood. And this desk is where I'm kind of going to work on things, so I've got all um my like paper crafting st stuff i still have my that's my mom's um where she did sudoku and she <laughs> they're gone they're in there the file system easy 
There's easy, moderate over there, hard, evil, and fiendish. <laughs> she loves Sudoku. God love her. Um, and um, yeah, so I have different things in there. And I have, she has, she was uh, a very good at sewing. And um, I still have her, some of her threads are in there and their buttons and things. So that's all kind of precious. And then over here is some fiber I'm going to spin. There's different things around there. My knitting books, I'm probably going to get a little bookshelf to put them up there. Things for um, coloring, because that's a lot of fun. And my little spinning wheel came. So, yes. So I might do a little section on this in the podcast. I'm not certain. Uh, but I'm getting ready to sit down and try to podcast for you. Maybe right there. I don't know where the light's going to be okay. I have ordered a ring light to come because, um, yeah, in the in the apartment it can be quite, you know, variable. The light dark can be dark. So we'll see. But I'm going to try to do a little episode there. So I just thought you might enjoy seeing the little room where I'll be podcasting. So in this episode, I have my knitting. I have a little bit of... Um, embroidery that I have started and I have a new little electric spinning wheel from Electric Eel. They make really really quite affordable spinning wheels um, in the scheme of spinning wheels and I'll talk about that a little bit and I <laughs> there's always a silver lining so I came here to the States um, and I'll talk about that later but also it happened to be at the same time the James River Yarn Crawl is on. That may not <laughs> quite be a silver lining because one of the silver linings is because I have dual citizenship, I'm also a taxpayer in the U.S. And so they did these the stimulus checks um, this year because of COVID and try to get people spending money. And I got one of those. So when I arrived, I got that and it enabled me to buy the little spinning wheel and yarn on the yarn crawl. And I'll talk a little bit about the yarn crawl. It's a lovely little yarn crawl. I'm today filming, I believe it is the 19th. It's Sunday, September 19th. It's on till next Saturday, which is the 25th of September. So I know they're doing some things online. Some of the shops have orders online and um, all the shops are open in person. They just, you know, of course, ask you to wear your mask. Um, Yes, so there are six shops participating and I'll talk about that as well. I don't think this is going to be a long podcast because I don't have a lot of knitting. but And I have a few little patterns I'd like to tell you about as well. Okay, so let's just start with the knitting. And again, if you've been here a while, you have seen that I have been working on my Stephen's West, Stephen West Curvet Shawl. And I'm calling it my great pumpkin shawl because it's in a fade from Irish Dyer uh, Fine Leaf Fiber. So this is where I am at the moment. I mean, you can't really see much because it's on sort of a small length of needle. I think I'll transfer it. And I have it on my wooden knit pros because I had this while I was on the plane. And um, I have my little stitch marker. That's a pumpkin can you see? Isn't that cute? And the yarn is the fine leaf fibers in the different orange fade. So this is the set that I got from her. Isn't that beautiful? I love vibrant colors. I love oranges. And it's the Blazing Heat collection. So it's a, a, a shawl collection, or it's a collection of a fade. Uh, it's fingering weight. And it is 87% wool and 13% Donegal Visqua. 13% Donegal Viscois Viscose. Why Why do I want to say Viscois? I want to say like, that not that like a cold fish soup? Viscois or something? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But what's really nice, it is not superwash. I, I mean, it doesn't say it's superwash and it, I don't think it feels like superwash. So that's, that's really quite nice. She has lovely yarns. She has her own website, which I believe is finely fibers and fiber is spelt, you know, the way we do across the pond, which is R E 
and um, yeah, finallyfibers.com. And as I said on another video, if you are interested in any of the Irish dyers, the Irish yarns that I might talk about, well, I'm not gonna talk a lot about yarns, these yarns today, that you may find that shipping is extraordinarily, well, not extraordinary, surprisingly cheaper from Ireland to other places than it is the saying same something time. from the US to Ireland or Canada to Ireland. So you might be pleasantly surprised in that. And also, um, yeah, the, I find that some of the indie dyed stuff there is not super expensive like you might think. Not like, so Life in the Long Grass is a bigger name. They are more expensive as it's hedgehog fibers, but the smaller indie dyers are not as expensive. So you might find if even if you're ordering from the US and the dollar's not too bad against the Euro at the minute. Um, it's not gonna cost you as much as you think if you wanna treat yourself to some Irish dyed yarns. Anyhow, and then I'm holding it with um, a blue lace weight. It's supposed to be mohair, but at the time I couldn't find any mohair. Just a blue lace weight, which is um, a juniper moon alpaca. Findlay, I believe, is the base. So yeah, so I'm working away on that. It's, it's slow going, um, but yeah, and I've made my mistakes in it. <laughs> so I've entered it, I'm entering it into two cows, three, well, two cows mainly. There's the spooky Mal, and I'm probably remembering the hashtag wrong. I'll put these on the screen. The spooky Mal run by uh, Benta at Arctic Crafts. And that's basically anything Halloween-y or harvesty. And that's on to the 31st of October or maybe the 1st of November. And then also the Not Obstructed by Perfection uh, cow, Mal. It's just an informal sort of thing from Name Rejoy Knits because in the past few of our podcasts, she's been talking about, yeah, well, I'm not being obstructed by perfection. And so anything that, you know, you've done that's kind of maybe fed mistakes or something that you're not, you know, trying something new and you're not going to worry about it being perfect, anything, you know, it's kind of broad. If you want to enter it in that cow, that it all comes under that heading. And again, I'll link to her so you can find out more about that cow and just her videos. She's so funny. I, I, I think she's she's got a great personality and um, yeah, so so I'm putting it in that. I have other shawls that are in the Across the Pond shawl cow from Fernanda of Little Monkeys and Me and Ruth of Ruth Loves to Knit. This is not going to be one of them. It's definitely not going to be done in time. I think it might be done in time for Amy Palco. I'm sure you know her, the Meaningful Stitch podcast, and she has all the shawls cow. And there are a couple new shawl cows coming up. Oh, I might as well, I know I've said this before, but if you're new here, there is also um, Fall for Shawls Cal by Knits and Pieces, and these are all podcasts, and there is the, oh, um, the Stephen West along, so it's called like the I Love, I, I'll put the thing here because I can't remember, and that is um, by Frivolous and Frugal. So because of life things, I'm particularly distracted. So I'm going to have probably more brain farts than usual. So there we are. That That is my knitting. I will say another um, little thing. I haven't been able, because I've been so busy, I haven't watched as many podcasts as I watch. And I try to comment on the smaller podcasts. Like I don't always comment on the, the ones where like 50 million people are commenting anyway, like um, knitting traditions or even the meaningful stitch because I just feel like, you know, they have enough comments to read. And when you comment on podcasts, it helps them, um, YouTube know that you're really interested. And so they show it to more people. So I tend to, you know, I, I don't want to comment on every single thing that, but that I watch because I would be busy commenting all day normally if I'm watching a lot of podcasts in the evening. But I try to do it on the sort of smaller, and smaller I mean sort of like under 5,000 subscribers maybe. I try to comment on there, and that's how you kind of build relationships. And, you know, if if people aren't having, you know, 100 comments on each episode, it's more easy to then respond. Like, so as a podcaster, it's more easy to respond and maybe get a relationship going. And a lot of people do that on Instagram, but I have to say I'm very kind of, I'm very casual with my Instagram. I don't check it every day at times. Sometimes I do check it every day, but a lot of days I don't. Anyhow, all that is to say, I have 
just one podcast note this time I wanted to tell you about. So I'm going to say the name of this podcast wrong. So if she's Finnish and the podcast is, it looks like Anna Juti Knits. I'll put it on the screen and I've forgotten her name as well. And I really apologize. But until September 30th, she has two new patterns she's just released and they are the Tato socks and the Rusko hat. And they're really nice. And actually I went ahead and I got both of those because I was excited about them. I thought they would be fun to knit. So she's having 30% off the pair of them or singly until the 30th of September. So, um, yeah, so I can't remember if there's a code or not, or if, that, if it's just a sale, but, um, I'll link her podcast as well. So you can check and you can, so you can see them. I apologize for my rambliness. Okay. Okay. I just popped up to get some of my things. So I had, um, my, my hand was getting sore because I knitted a dishcloth and I won't show you the dishcloth because I've been used. First time I actually knitted a dishcloth and the first time I'd ever knitted with cotton. And I, I have, you know, often heard people saying, you know, knitting with cotton sometimes hurts their hand. And funnily enough, it did hurt my hand as well. And I'm not sure why, why, why does knitting with cotton, I guess it just doesn't go as smoothly or something. It just, it just hurt my hand through here. If you find that when you knit with cotton, I like where is that where everyone's hand is hurting or is it somewhere different? Hurt my hand here anyways. I'd be interested to know if you know why it is exactly that cotton can hurt you more to knit with. Anyhow, so I put down my knitting for a while and I was um I had to go buy bits and bobs, you know, for the apartment to get ready. And um so I was in one of the big shops and I found some knitting, uh, if you notice, if you're a knitting podcaster, how we all say like knitting for anything, if they, if you know, if you're spinning something up, we always make the mistake. So I was, I was knitting, you know, if it's embroidery, we slip and say knitting. If it's crochet, we slip and say knitting. Like we do that so much as knitters. Any, anyways, have you noticed that? <laughs> Leave a comment below. <laughs> <laughs> if you've noticed that, I know I've I know I've heard other people say that. Anyway, so I was embroidering this one here, starting off really simple. This little kit, it's called. Here we go. Sorry about. There's a little bit of crinkling. Snowy forest, and it was like five dollars, and it's the simplest ever. It's even got um, the printed thing on there, so you don't have to stencil anything. And it's basically just your straight stitches. Um, yeah, there's the straight stitch, straight stitch, the satin stitch, and the running stitch. And it kind of shows you how to do that. And you get everything. You get all your little yarns. So I started that. And it, it was quite nice doing a different move, movement, movement with the hand. And, you know, as you can see I'm not very far along. But, yeah, very enjoyable. And I got a couple... couple got a couple other kits and I, and I counted cross stitch kit as well um that I will probably do when my brain is better but I know me and counting right now is not going to be a good mix so and I also started yes I went into Joann's right I went into Michael's and to Joann's and it was like you know it was dangerous for a crafter and the prices, a lot of the prices are so good when they have their sale stuff. I mean, so back in Ireland, at least in the west of Ireland, I don't know if they have in Dublin. I don't think they have these things there either. But we don't have big craft shops like that. We don't have like Michael's and Joann's or Hobby Lobby. We don't have that stuff. Um, you know, so we don't have a place where you go in and you're a crafter and you're like, oh my God, look at it all. So that's what I did. And... Um, so I got some things for paper crafting and I'm starting to make a, just a little um, scrapbook, paper craft journal. And that's my front page. And I just, um, you know, I have the little, I got the travel stickers and, you know, some autumn stickers. That one says family. And also I'm just kind of keeping a record of, yeah, what I've been doing and, and all that sort of thing because it this is a time 
it's a pivotal time in our family's life and there will be some things I want to remember and have a little record of. So let's just say that. So that's there and I'm having I'm having a lot of fun with that. I got a lot of lovely sorry about splashing me leg. But it's so hot here. It's so hot and um yeah, I'm not used to the heat, so uh yeah, it's in it's, it was even in the 90s Fahrenheit for a while, but I think it's mainly in the 80s Fahrenheit, which is sort of, you know, low 30s, high 20s and Celsius. And so, yeah, so I'm very keeping very cool. And yeah, but I, they had lovely papers that were autumn themed and oh, yeah, so you can only imagine. I was like, oh, my goodness, what is this like? So, yeah. So let's talk about um, the yarn crawl a little bit. So the James River Yarn Crawl is on September 17th to the 15th. And there are, so they have a website, jamesriveryarncrawl.com, would you believe? And they also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Ravelry. And there are, oh, let me show you this is a little bit of, so there's sort of the map of the yarn crawl places, I hope. That's the map. I'm try, oh, I try not to talk with covering my face. So there's the little map. And um, so the places are Center of the Yarniverse in Ashland, which is up here. Looks like it's that bit past Richmond on the northern side, maybe of Richmond. Dances with Wool in Midlothian, which is kind of looks like maybe westerly of Richmond. And Yarn Matters, which is in Williamsburg, which I went to. Fly, the Flying Needles, which is also in Williamsburg, what I went to, which I went to, which is amazing. Like Williamsburg is not a very big town, really, in the scheme of American towns. And there's two lovely yarn shops. Is the very front of the shop, and it's just in it's in a, a like a strip mall area. So if you're driving around trying to find it, it's right next to the subway. And down there is the coffee house. Is it right there? I don't have my glasses on because I'm steaming up. Anyways, it's right around there somewhere. And I worked there before I moved to Ireland as a waitress part-time while I was going to uni. And back then they had really good crab soup and coffee. So it could be the same. I don't know. You can check it out. Look where I am. I hope you can hear me. There's Toad Hollow, Cottontail Farms. I'm on the James River. Rion Crawl. So I'm here in Virginia, obviously. I'm not in Ireland at the minute. Um, if you've been following the little life updates, you'll know that. So there's the James River Raw Yarn Crawl is on from today, which is the 17th until the 25th. And I think there are five or six yarn shops involved. And I'm very lucky here in Williamsburg, there are two. I mean, we're super spoiled. And I, oh, I didn't even see the back of this side. Oh dear, I've already made my purchases and I will show you. I'm terrible for, <laughs> for the colors, the bright colors and the little project bags. But anyways, so there are fiber braids. Look at that. There's so many amazing project bags. So we're in the flying needles in Williamsburg. I don't think I said that yet, but there are all sorts of everything and they've opened up an extra this isn't usually their shop they've opened up right next to the shop to have the toad Ho cotton tail farms and toad hollow and i'm sure you know toad hollow from youtube and this is the um i've forgotten already the surprise party shawl and they have kits and surprise party shawl from helen stewart and these are some of their kits and i'm really drawn to this but surprisingly this one as well and if you've been watching the podcast you know I'm not usually into the lighter colors but they're really beautiful so yes so we've got little um there's some of the kits for the surprise party shawl little needle felting kits aren't they adorable look at that that is really cute and then all the yarns I haven't even gone into the um the permanent main shop next door yet but I got um, a lighter version, would you believe, of this one, which was called Pink Christmas. And I got it in the um, fingering weight. Okay, well, it's very warm. Certainly not in Ireland anymore. 
everyone is filming. So let's go next door and see what we can see. Okay, so I'm in the Flying Needles regular shop and it's air conditioned in here, so it feels amazing. And the local dyer for this shop is Robin's Promise. She's a Williamsburg based dyer and she has, now this is like, as per usual with my phone, it looks bluer than it is. It's actually a teal green, but we are just jam packed with all sorts of everything. And this is what I'm super interested in. These just came out, the fallen maple leaves. Now it's looking a little tiny little bit more bright or saturated than it is in real life. But isn't that gorgeous? You know me and many skeins. And they really are my downfall. So I'm considering this as a purchase I might make. Sorry for the crinkling. But there's just like all sorts in here. So I'm going to turn off. Oh, and these are the special items for the yarn crawl. Oh, right, yeah. So the, the bags from Cottontail Farm. So it's all about the blue crab. And this is, I believe, this is the blue crab yarn. Yep, blue crabs of the James from Robin's Promise. Okay, I'm going to turn you off now. I hope you can hear me through the mask. And we are at the Flying Needles. The second yarn shop that's in Williamsburg, up in Norge. Oops. Um, sorry, I just had a message come through. So we're up in Norge at Yarn Matters for the James River Yarn Crawl. And I have, can you imagine, I've gotten a few things. This is some special things for the yarn crawl. She's designed this lovely cowl and there's some kits. And you may have guessed that I might've bought one of those kits cause you know, orange and stuff. And this is their, their own brand yarn that they have. The Yarn Matters yarn. And there's some mohair and all, but there's all sorts of lovely bags of which I bought one and I'll show you later by local Williamsburg maker and then sort of like the color sort of like um spin cycle type yarns from Queensland collection I believe the name is that's not Williamsburg and then there's Malabrigo lovely bags again another local maker that's re that's fantastic like and there's another zip bag in it look at that and then there's the earth, earth yarns that look at that shawl is made out of two of them and a solid isn't that amazing but there's yeah there's lots of lovely things there's some urban girl yarns out of richmond yankee dyer oh there's there's a lot of see all these are new to me so i'm going slightly mad um yeah and then a whole lot of malabrigo and all sort of things look at this lovely cow there and the colors in that i was tempted by that but i behaved myself and also by this this hat kit so there's that and there's just all kinds i'm probably going too fast i'm sorry about that all kinds of loveliness and look at all these lovely earth yarns Look at this. Uh, I didn't buy any of those, would you believe? I was I was behaved myself because I was um and this is oh yes, just real quickly, this is a vest that she's designed. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Oh it's blowing out a bit. It's a Christmas the Christmassy color one. And then these yarns are special for the yarn crawl. So I got a few of these. Yeah, by like a color colorway fiber arts <laughs> so oh, i was wondering was there information on that but it's not yeah but there's so many lovely things so yeah i've um made my purchases i'm going too fast i'm sorry everybody made my purchases and now i'm going to go home and behave myself there are more yarn shops in the yarn call. There are four more, two up around Richmond and two around, like, one around Norfolk and Virginia Beach. I don't think I'll be going to those. But this has been wonderful. It's wonderful and also slash dangerous <laughs> to the pocketbook. And then there's the Baba Sheep, which is in Norfolk. 
and the Yarn Club, which is in Virginia Beach. And a lot of these have their online shops as well. And part of me was going, oh, I'd like to go to all of these places. Um, the, the ones going towards Norfolk and Virginia Beach for me would be sort of difficult just because the amount of like traffic and being living in the west of Ireland I'm not used to like these massive big highways and all but so I'd be more likely to go up to the Richmond Way ones because that's not as, as crazy and I went to university in Richmond so I'm kind of familiar well, I wouldn't be going in the middle of Richmond anyway that doesn't matter but I think really for the sake of my bank account I will not go to any more of those yarn shops because I just obviously cannot control myself because again um, where I live in the west of Ireland there aren't any yarn shops that have I mean and these are American yarns so they're all new to me you know and even with the bigger names that they might have there that's all new brands to me as well so yes so I think that I will probably not even look at their websites but and you get a lot of goodies at different shops and of course if you go to all the shops and you get a stamp you get entered for the grand prize which is uh, you know a lovely set of different things if you purchase something at each shop you get a little something and if you purchase more you get more some things which I think really none of us are buying the things in order to get the some things all the some the some things are nice but uh, yeah so I'm gonna segue now which is into the section which is purely my acquisitions from the yarn crawl so if you aren't into that I totally understand so if that is you I will just say um, thank you so much for joining if you are interested in the life update that'll be a little bit after this and I will put timestamps I will see you soon okay so here we go acquisitions in the James River yarn crawl flying needles and oh there's going to be crankling I'm, and I, I apologize, there is some crinkling. So this is the flying needles. This is one of the swags that you get when you buy, you know, a certain amount. And I certainly bought that certain amount. And so let me show you. First off, I want to show you before the wrong yarn crowd started, I went into flying needles just to kind of <laughs> soothe my soul by looking at yarn. And I didn't buy anything there then except except they had a sale section and they happened to have two of these beautiful Plymouth company yarns Plymouth select yarns and they are Worsted Merino superwash 100% and this colorway is 60 number 66 and they're only I mean they're $15 regularly but they were on sale and they at a certain percent off there were only these two skeins left and um, I just, I love all the shades of brown as well as my, you know, really vibrant, saturated, bright colors. I love a lot of the autumnal shades. And uh, so I knew that I had to have these. So I think they might have been around $10 or something. So I got those last got those ahead of time. So I just wanted to show you that. And when I was on the yarn crawl at Yarn Matters, I found a mohair that's going to be beautiful with it. And I'll show you that in a bit. So started off you know, my, my yarn buying frenzy with that before the yarn crawl. Then the yarn crawl came. I saw this first, I saw this mini skin set. And Robin's Promise is the local dyer. That's Susan. Her name is Susan. She's based here in Williamsburg. And she also is, I think she's the owner of that shop as well, or part owner. Um, and this is her Fallen Maple Leaves, Leaves mini skein set. And there's uh, 920 yards in total, and it's 7525 superwash merino and nylon. And this was so beautiful. I love the autumn colorways. And then I love the names of her yarns because she is inspired by birds. And actually, I must ask her because I do want to go in and have a little interview with her. And she said she was fine, fine with that. You know, we'll do that after the yarn crawl craziness is done. And when my craziness maybe is a bit more settled. Do you see this robin? That's that's not an American robin, I don't think. That looks very much like our robin in Ireland and in the UK. So I must ask about that because the American robin is different. Anyhow, that's a segue. But she is inspired by birds. 
So like these colorways, a lot of them we have, the red one is called the African fire finch feather. And I love birds, I love birds as well. Let me not cover my face. And then we have this dark one is maroon oriole feather. And so the, the names are lovely and they make you think about the birds that she's been inspired by. Right here again, there's crinkling. So I think the, the colors are doing pretty well because it's sunny enough this way that's much better so these are all inspired by the colors of the pheasant so again so I I don't want to crinkle this too much but some are like you know the pheasant eye the pheasant neck feathers the pheasant you know feathers on different parts of its body and that each one is individually labeled and it tells you so that's really special I love that for the trunk show <clears throat> this is not a dyer they have all the time. Now, the dyer herself isn't there, but they have this dyer here, Megs and Company. And I got, this is her DK Merino, and it's a four-ply, so it's 200, 230 yards. This color is acorn, so it's, that's probably pretty close. That's probably pretty close. And then these two are pumpkin spice, but one is that bit darker than the others. And so I thought I could kind of make sort of a little fade with that because they're all gonna be that bit different. I just thought that was lovely. And I love the autumnal colors all year round, but especially at this time of year. And because I had my bonus money, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go for it. So I got those there. And some of the swag I got from that shop, well, one of the things you get anyway is that you get your little pin from the James River, sorry, I covered my face. You get your little pin from the James River Yard Crawl. And I got this lovely little sn label snap. And she had like four different colors, sorry, that you could choose from. And I chose this one and it says, it's not focusing, but it has this, the picture of the state of Virginia. And it says, you know, the James River Yarn Crawl 2021, the flying needles. And I thought when I make this up, like that's going to be really lovely, really lovely as a label on that. And it's, um, it's, you can take it on and off to wash. And then I just stuck these on there. And then you got the little stitch marker holder from Katrinkles. And it says, again, says the James River Yarn Crawl. And each shop you go to, then you can get the little stitch marker um, with a certain amount of purchase, or you can, I think they're like two euros each if you want to buy that. And that was the one from Yarn Matters. And this, and that's a larger one. So that probably goes up to say a size eight millimeter needle. And this one is smaller. And it, I couldn't actually make it go on the stitch marker holder. This is the one from Flying Needle. But also, a mini skein. So I got to choose all the different kind of little mini skeins. So I chose a very upt autumnal one. It's very drapey. As you so know. that was in the main regular shop. And then on the side shop where they just had opened up for the yarn crawl with the Toad Hollow. So I'll just show you. So Toad Hollow, they have a podcast as well. And they traveled down from New Jersey to Williamsburg to exhibit. And they are on the Crafty Toes on YouTube, if you haven't seen them yet. And they had, they had many, be many beautiful yarns, as you can imagine. I got this. And if you have watched before, you will know that I'm not usually into the light colors. But this one really spoke to me. And it's called Pink Christmas. And I have a beautiful sock yarn set from Gideon Yarns called Smiling's My Favorite. That is sort of darker and it's glittery which is and that's an elf reference which this might be nice to add with that and alternate the skein sure but i i love that so i got that and i got one of their pins i'm not usually a pin person because, but anyways i got i got one of their pins because i'm a crazy person and i'm going to get one of the robin's promise one as well but she has those all the time so i wasn't going to spend good yarn money on a pin that i can get every time so anyhow, so that's what I got from Toad Hollow. And then there was Cottontail Farm, Farm. Project Buy Bags and Fiber Notions, Cottontail Farm VA on Etsy, and Cottontail Farm VA on probably Instagram. So she had many, many wonderful bags. So this is a Christmas bag. 
and it has the cardinal on there, the male cardinal, cardinal, which is also the state bird for Virginia. And the female is sort of a beautiful sort of warm, dusky browns with a bit of, depending on the female, sometimes they, like I've noticed some of them have bit sort of more reddy, orangey bits than others, but they're both beautiful birds. And uh, so that's it. Now they don't have pockets and I've noticed a lot of these, I looked at a lot of people's bags and, and there don't seem to be so many pockets as there would be in bags that I would normally buy um, elsewhere. And I don't know if that's just, is that just a regular thing? Um, I'm not certain. But anyway, so I bought a, a little pouch, a little triangle pouch that she made and it's so cute. It's got um, a little puff of fish on there and some jellyfish, so under the sea, and that's really nice. And these are made out of Portuguese, of all things. So, okay. I came away from Europe to buy something European. It's a little, again, a notions pouch, and it just is a little snap, and has a lovely feel to it. And that's it inside. So I got, I got one of Yarn Matters then. I thought I'll check out Yarn Matters, so. And they're all in this lovely project bag that I got there as well from a local Williamsburg maker. So anyway, I go in and the lovely owner, Marina, Marina, I believe that's her name. She greeted me right away and we were talking and she was, you know, showing me around. And she had designed this pattern for the yarn crawl. It's a cow. And these are the yarns and that's Yarn Matters. That's their own. That's their own yarn, or their own dyed yarn. And it's a MCM, so extra fine superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And it's a DK weight, and then uh, the, ex the other ball for the accent. So I'll try to show you that. Oh, there, I think you can kind of see. So again, these are my lovely orangey colors and autumn though, so I, you know, I got that. And this bag is actually quite handy, I think, to put your things in and you can see what's in there. And then I saw a local dyer up in Richmond, Urban Girl Yarns. That's her. Saw her. She had some, they had some mohairs there. And she's on all the things, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Etsy, and Ravelry. And this color is Sylvan. And it's 70% uh, kid mohair and 30% mulberry silk and 460 yards and 100 grams. And their base, that base is called Bangkok. So isn't that lovely? And um, I thought, Never. remember these ones I bought on the sale when I first came? I thought they this would be a nice pairing. So I'm excited about that. So that Urban Girl yarns are something they carry all the time, but the uh, dyer they have in special the yarn crawl is Colorway, and Way is her name. It's W-A-E is how she spells that, and this is her tag. She has really beautiful things, and she's an artist, and you can really see in the way she does her colors. I got this as sort of, probably just as a single yarn, um, maybe a shawlette or socks, and this is the colorway Forest Hearth. And these are all Superwash 8020 Merino and Nylon. My face, Superwash Merino and Nylon fingering weights. And then this one, it was a colorway dyed especially for the Yarn Crawl, and it's called Virginia is for Lovers. Isn't that lovely? And, and then I got these two as well, which is, this is called, I love her names as well, Dried Red Roses. It's a little bit deeper than what it's looking there. It's a little bit deeper. And then this one, which is called Autumn Turns. Look at that. Look at that. And so I was thinking I could do, again, a type of a fade. With these three. And possibly this looks just looks like something. Sorry, this looks like something to me that you might you might find an appropriate Stephen West pattern. I don't know. 
So if you can think of something, so four fingering weights, which we're gonna have uh, four times four, 1600 yards, and you know of a pattern that these might be look quite nice in, please let me know. This or just, here, which is my original idea to do something there. That might be nice. So this was a lovely bag by Angela's Knits. And she's located here in Williamsburg. And uh, she just has her phone. Well, I mean, I just showed her phone number, but I, if she has it on her tag, she probably wants people to call it, so. But she's on Instagram as Angela Knits too. Is so it's nice, it's a nice big bag. So you can put your sweater in that. Wooly kind of tweedy feeling fabric. And just, I love the little pink sheep. And again, but it doesn't have a pocket. There's no pocket. So that's, I'm just curious, is that more common here in the U.S. so that it doesn't have a pocket? This might be what I've run across at the moment. So that's my yarn haul. And then I got my electric eel spinner as well in the post. So you, you may be familiar with these. So... Um, he Dreaming Robots is the company, and he developed these a few years ago and did a Kickstarter launch for an inexpensive spinning wheel in the scheme of spinning wheels. You can buy the little, the Nano, I think it's called. I think it's just under $100, um, so that's really good. So you get all your parts. You get, with, with this one, which is the, the number six, you get six bobbins. Now everything is plastic because it's probably 3D printed or something, and that's what makes it inexpensive. Because spinning can be, spinning can be off-putting. It can really be expensive to get into spinning, and this I think this is wonderful. And that means I have a spinning wheel here, and I don't have to bring my heavier one back and forth, and then I worry about it. And because I had traveled by myself this time, I just couldn't. Even the other, the I have a Ashford. And um, it's just that bit heavy for someone with a lot of back issues to be carrying. So I, uh, my friend Sandra is actually going to be selling these at Irish Fiber Crafters in Ireland. And so she got the first few in and I tried it and I was like, that's really good. I think I'll get one for the U.S. because I knew I'd be here for several months. So yeah, dreamingrobots.com. That's here in the U.S. And then if you're in Ireland... They may be sold out already, but she'll be getting more at irishfibercrafters.com. She'll be having some because it's, you know, that way, because if you are getting them sent from America to Ireland, then you get all your customs. I haven't put it together yet, but look, six bobbins. And then you have your little I haven't wheel. put it together properly, so I haven't tightened the screws or anything. So and there's um, the orifice. So that's a good size. So you can make some nice chunky art yarn in there. Um, you know, a decent size chunky art yarn if you want. And I also went ahead and got the Lazy Kate that they have. And everything comes like flat packed. That will be the Lazy Kate. And it has three um, sticky uppy things. So, yeah. So, yeah, I got I got all the things. I got all the things. Okay. And when I get that going, I'll talk about that a bit more. So I hope you enjoyed that. Maybe you got inspired to check out some of those indie dyers or some of those independent yarn yeah, shops. I'll just give a little life update because I know some of you are concerned. Um, in the last video that I did on YouTube, I was talking about ho hopefully, you know, I would be going to the States and staying for several months to be with family for in October, you know, beginning of October or so. But what has happened is that, um, and on YouTube, because it's such a general platform, I won't name the person, I don't think. I don't know. Because just, yeah, anyways. So a family member, a close family member, was suddenly taken with heart problems and was hospitalized. And they are already, I don't know, they're already going through cancer treatment. And they've been doing well with the cancer treatment. But this is, you know, one of the reasons why it's really important for me and for Tom, because Tom is very close to my family that are here as well, to come back to this Williamsburg area and be here for quite some time to see them. And it also means his Canadian relatives can, have come down 
and spent time with us as well. And that's so important as well. Mom's dual citizenship is Irish and Canadian. Mine is Irish and U.S. So at the minute, he wasn't able to fly into U.S. So we weren't sure. But anyhow, I got a message um, that my family member was rushed into hospital and with heart problems. And I was like, okay, I got to come now. I have to come by, I'll come by myself. So I arranged a flight for as soon as I could possibly get out of Ireland and I arrived. And by that time, the family member was moved to the large university hospital, actually was transferred. At that point, he was scheduled to go in for very major heart surgery. And by the time I got my over all clear, the next day he was going in. So I didn't actually get to see him in person, but of course I'm able to, you know, talk with him on video all the time. So that's fine. So me and my sisters and my brother-in-law, we all went up to the hospital and we stayed there with my stepmom. I mean, we couldn't even go into the cafeteria with her. So like we were just outside the hospital with her through the surgery. Thank goodness. Like he came through it really well. Thank you so much for all the people that were sending thoughts and prayers and good energy. People sent Reiki. I mean, wonderful messages. It was so appreciated. Made us feel good. Helpful for my dad. You know, even if you're just going to look on that level of like feeling cared for. Even if you don't believe, you know, that people's good intentions can can make a difference on some other level. It helps on the mundane level even so 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 appreciate so that all happened a couple days ago just now uh gotten out of the icu he's into his own room there's no date as of yet of when he might be released you know they just have to take it day by day but um when he is released him and my stepmom are going to come here. so because they're not going to go back to their place because it's 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 not on one level. And this little apartment here, they take care of it for me when I'm away. So, I mean, I just, this is an apartment that I inherited from my mother a few years ago when she passed away. And I have kept it because it's definitely, it's all paid for and everything. So it makes sense if I want to be near my family while, you know, my parents are older and I call my dad and my stepmom my parents as well so like my dad will very soon be 81 you'd never know well maybe you know now that he's going through all this stuff but he's been working he works at and with the graduate students he works in the graduate program at William and Mary he works through the COVID remotely he works part-time and um yeah I mean he was even just to you know before the heart went really bonkers he was even going in personally when it was safe sometimes you know he he loves his he loves doing what he does and uh i hope this has been loud enough i just realized because i don't have my microphone like i have in ireland anyway where was I? I kept this place in order to have a base to come to that we could spend the late winter late autumn and sort of early winter months here <laughs> and be near my family because time is very precious and you know when my mom passed away definitely felt that more keenly than ever so this has been a blessing and it's even an extra blessing now because it's a place where they can come and we can take care of my dad at, and it's it's made wheelchair friendly so you know all the doorways are wide everything is set up that um it's just built. It's a ground floor apartment and it's set up for like if you have to get around with a walker or anything like that. It's very friendly. There are no pets here that could potentially trip you up. So this is the best place for them to be. Um, so like my other sister's house isn't on the flat and they have pets. So I'm so thankful that I have this to share with them. So yeah, so the past while I've been busy rearranging things you know because it was arranged just for Tom and I and for when they would stay my dad and my stepmom would stay in, in full health as it were not where like you know you, you might need a walker or you know this these sort of things so and also not for where like 
four people are going to be living in the place at once. <laughs> it's only two bedroom. So we're, we're doing a lot of things and my sister is going to come up and her and her husband and bring some of my parents' things from their own house so that in the big bedroom that can be all set up from them for them with their things because it's several it's many months to recover from an open heart surgery like that so um to make it feel as much as possible like their own bedroom so i'm doing a lot of that and um it means i need to clean out closets that like have all the my christmas things in there for when i'm here and um uh, and let me, as a side note, thank goodness for Goodwill. Goodwill is a series of charity or thrift shops, as they call them here. Uh, I think it's all throughout America. And we have one in Williamsburg that's so good. And over the years that we've been coming here, I have just been buying all sort of little Christmas things here so I can have, a, you know, Christmas decorations. Oh, yeah. And kind of stock the house with things. So, yeah. That's that's a really good um, charity thought shop and yeah. Anyhow, segue cleaning out closets and drawers and stuff so they can put their own things in there. So that's keeping me really busy, which is a big reason why I didn't get much knitting done. Because if you've watched before, you know that I'm often knitting a lot of things and I get a lot of things done, but just not at the minute. But um, so we're just keeping, you know, holding all the positive thoughts in and taking it one day at a time and i don't know when tom is going to be able to make it um that's still unknown but anyways i'm here and that's fine and you know my sisters are around and you know nieces and nephews and yeah so that's a little of a life update just for people that follow and that were curious and uh concerned so, um, yeah, so there's a lot of wonderful nature here. Once it stops being so hot, um, I will go out and film and hopefully podcast from outside as well. So you can see the lovely river and all that sort of thing. Okay, friends, I can see I'm popping up towards an hour and I really didn't want that. But um, yes, so take care. I hope things are going well for you. And, you know, we'll get through all the tough times. Thinking of all of us, like I keep you all in my meditations and in my prayers. And, um, yeah, may you be well, friends. Take care. With love from Not Wild Cottage. <laughs>